on the 23rd day of October, Halloween gave to me 23 bloody canoes, 22 pole corpses, 21 groovy ashes, 20 Japanese giallos, 19 kung fu vampires, 18 haunted marches, 17 eternal lonelinesses, 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Bettys baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 gold ones shooting, 6 psychics scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey folks, welcome to the uh, the twenty third day of the thirty one days of Halloween. We are rapidly closing in on the final week here, which is uh, again I've said it before. It's bittersweet. I, I you know this is a lot of work to watch all these movies and to do these reviews and get them all edited and posted and all that stuff. But I love doing it, and when it's gone, it, it makes my heart empty because it means Halloween is over, and I don't want that to be a thing. Uh, I want it to be Halloween all year long. And that is why on this episode, we are going to learn how to keep Halloween in our hearts uh, all the year. Um, but maybe not with this movie. So, you know, I've, I've said it before, but if you haven't listened to every episode, then um, the all the movies that we're talking about the, this month uh, fall into one of three categories. They are movies I have never seen before. They are movies... That I have seen, but it's been a while and I want to go revisit them and, and give them a, a, a fresh take. And uh, there are movies that I dearly love. And we've got two movies on the list ahead of us, this one included, which were movies i just never seen before. And The Burning, I hadn't seen because slashers were never really my thing. And when I was a, you know, young pup horror fan and you know, the burning was bouncing around on, you know, cable and VHS and that kind of thing. It just wasn't the thing that appealed to me. I, the cover I always thought was cool. Uh, you know, that, that art, uh, artistic rendering of the shadowy figure with the garden shears over the camp. Um, but it always felt like a bit of a Friday the 13th ripoff and spoilers. It's a bit of a Friday the 13th ripoff. Uh, so I just never got around to it because Friday the 13th wasn't really my thing either. I was always more into, you know, ghost stories and monster movies and that kind of thing. I, I was more into the the supernatural and the extra natural and that kind of thing as opposed to, you know, the axe-wielding killer of, uh, of stereotype. So I hadn't caught this at the time. And uh, so it was interesting going back to it because I know a lot of people hold it in very high regard. And I, I kind of went into it n not realizing that Savini had done the effects, although as soon as I saw his name pop up, I was like, oh, right, he he did the effects for this. And, and as it happens, he gave up the opportunity to do Friday the 13th Part 2 so that he could do The Burning, which makes some sense because it gave him an opportunity to stretch a little bit, and there, there's some interesting effects work in it. Um, but the basic premise of The Burning is that there was uh, a group of kids that basically are just a bunch of like little shitty kids who decide that they're going to play this terrible prank uh, on this poor other dude uh, who is the like, janitor of the camp or something. And, you know, he might be mentally disabled, question mark. I, I, I feel like the reason that they're getting this guy other than they think he's annoying um, is a little sketchy, but it kind of doesn't matter because, you know, it's the opening moments of the movie. It, it sort of pays off later, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it is just an excuse to get this guy, you know, to catch fire. And, and that's what happens. He gets set on fire and he gets taken to some institution to recover and then bus out uh, so that he can uh, wreak havoc on uh, a camp of kids. And, you know, at first it seems like, well, maybe this is just a random camp. But uh, you soon realize like, oh, it turns out that actually uh, there is a reason for him to be terrorizing uh, some of these kids in particular. Um, but, yeah, it's just, 
you know, uh, a bunch of campers uh, at a at a summer camp, a bunch of camp counselors, and they are beset upon by this burned up dude, and you know, uh, mayhem ensues. A serial killer uh, slash slasher movie happens to them, and that and that's kind of it. You know, that's really the 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 thrust of it. Um, it is totally a riff on Friday the Thirteenth. That's totally what this movie is. It doesn't have Jason, um, but it is camp counselors being uh, stalked by somebody. Uh, what has a, um, a a pair of garden shears that he does his his dirty business with, and um, they call him Cropsy, which I think is a uh, according to that Killer Legends documentary. Um, was a bit of a, an urban legend, and this seems to take place in, in upstate New York, which would fit. Um, the thing that makes this movie interesting, and I think worth talking about, we're, it, it, well, really, it's two things. One thing is the, uh, the, the cast is crazy in the sense that it has a very, very young uh, Jason Alexander in a major role uh, as, you know, the dude who uh, uh, is sort of the guy who can get you anything at the camp. You know, he's sort of the Morgan Freeman character from Shawshank, only a lot more irritating because he's very like, hey, guys, hey, how's everybody doing? Hey, what can I get you? Oh, look at this guy over here. What's up with you? And he he's almost like a Catskills comic or something. And it's a bit of an annoying character, but I get it. Um, and... So he's in it, uh, Fisher Stevens, um, who you might remember from movies like uh, Short Circuit or Hackers uh, or, or Super Mario Brothers, the movie, um, apparently has a role on Succession these days. Uh, and, you know, he's been working forever and ever, uh, done voices for like Isle of Dogs, uh, the, that Wes Anderson joint. So, you know, he's been around forever, you know, since the 80s. He's had a long career. But he's young in this movie, or a scrawny little kid in this film. Um, gets his, his fingers chopped off, which is kind of fun. And in a, in a role that I don't think even has a speaking component is Holly Hunter, um, who you see sort of in the background of scenes. But I, again, I don't know that you ever hear her voice in the movie, which is, is, is kind of nuts. And beyond that, you also have uh, Brad Gray as the writer uh, of this movie. Um, and, you know, he's a, a guy who wrote for like the, the Larry Sanders show uh, for a long time and um, has been, you know, a, a, a writer and producer for years and years and years up, up to and including now, you know, like he's he's been a producer on like uh, uh, real time for a long time. I think he's the with the Brillstein Gray Company. He is the gray of the Brillstein Gray Company. Um, so he he is credited with the story. And then uh, Harvey Weinstein, the now disgraced producer of Miramax Films, Harvey Weinstein is one of the writers on the film as well. So it, you know, it, it is a movie that has just a, a, a metric shit ton of people that you have recognized, you know, uh, whether they're actors or people behind the scenes or whatever, like big movers and shakers in Hollywood all kind of came out of the burning or the burning was, a, you know, a stepping stone to other things. And it, it's nuts. Um, but so here, here's, you know, how it all shakes out. I, I think the biggest problem with the burning is that you don't really have a likable character to hang on to. The, um, the, the main dude, a guy named Todd, as played by Brian Matthews, is just such a milk toast. It's really hard to get behind him, you know? Like, he ended up being on... Days of Our Lives in Santa Barbara had a, had a pretty good career in in uh, uh, soap operas, but he he's just so white bread. It, like there's almost nothing to that character. Um, you know, you've got his female counterpart in the movie uh, who is Leah Ayers, 
And she was in a bunch of movies, um, you know, up through the 90s. And has, has since seemed to retire from acting. But, you know, was in a lot of television and, and TV movies and stuff like that. Which is, again, totally fine. Totally good career. Um, there is the other annoying kid, uh, Alfred, as played by Brian Backer. Who you would absolutely recognize. Like, he's he was in Fast Times. Um, he was, uh, you know, bouncing around in Santa Barbara, the uh, soap opera as well. Uh, showed up in, you know, a number of roles. Uh, I think this was his first role, and then he was in Fast Times. And then um, shows up in The Money Pit, uh, of all things. But, you know, it's... It, it, so they're like all the people kind of went on to other stuff for the most part, but there just isn't any character to kind of hang your hat on. And the serial killer, the the you know villain of the film, is pretty interesting. Uh, the you know Tom Savini burn makeup is is really solid. It's really eerie and unsettling, but you don't get a ton of it through the through the film, uh, which is unfortunate. And, um, you know, the, the fact that most of the characters, like uh, most of the guys are just trying to get laid, um, and none of the, none of that behavior is, is terribly endearing, you know, it's just them like wanting to fuck girls. And when the girls say no, they get mad at them and you're like, this is just gross. Like, no wonder Harvey Weinstein is credited as a writer on this this is one of the more chauvinistic films that i've seen in a in a while um so there there aren't great characters to to really root for in the movie the killer is pretty good but it's just garden shears it's you know people getting stabbed with garden shears and things are getting cut with garden shears and all that stuff is kind of fine uh, Tom Savini, of course, is uh, is very good at what he does, and this is sort of him at the height of his powers. The best sequence in the movie is one that you have either seen or heard about, which is uh, this dude hiding in a canoe, the villain hiding in a canoe, uh, a canoe, and just straight up murdering like four people on a raft. And that's really fun and exciting, and if there were more of that in the movie, then you can kind of forgive all the other faults of the film, but it's just a thing that happens one time, and then you're like, okay, well, that was cool, I guess. Now back to these characters that I don't really like watching. Um, so, it, you know, the, the, the best part of the movie, other than that rafting, is at the very end, where after, in theory, you know, our Cropsy murder is now dead, um... But you get uh, sort of a, you know, a campfire uh, uh, in a different place and somebody telling a story uh, about, you know, the uh, the Cropsy killer and how, you know, he's out there stalking, looking for another camp to murder people at. And it ends with the guy telling the story, kind of looking at the camera saying, don't look, he'll see you. Don't breathe. He'll hear you. Don't move. You're dead. And that's, again, cool. And it makes for a good poster. But I, it just doesn't add up to much uh, is, is the big problem. And that's unfortunate because I'd had such high hopes for The Burning. I'd heard about it for so long. And then finally getting around to watching, I was like, well, this was okay. Um, you know, I, I, I do have a, a fondness for some slashers. I think the Prowler is fantastic. That's one that the more I watch it, the more I kind of like it. Um, maybe it's because it's just got more jello trappings and, and there are characters in it that I like and, and that kind of thing. And the burning just doesn't have that. It's, it's interesting, um, as a novelty for the people in it and behind it, uh, and who went on to other, you know, much better work. Um, and there are things about it to recommend, like it's not a total, a, a total flop. Uh, there are things that are interesting about the burning, uh, just not for me. I think, uh, I, I want a little more story. I want a little more character. And I, I found all these people in the movie to be mostly kind of reprehensible and, and not people I wanted to spend cinematic time with. Um, and maybe coming off the heels of something like Poltergeist where 
all these characters are very rich and, it, and the whole thing feels very lived in. And this feels like a slasher movie. And it, and it doesn't feel like a terribly original slasher movie. It feels like something made by people who saw Friday the 13th and wanted to make a buck. Um, and, and did a reasonable job at making a slasher movie, um, but nothing that elevates it to something greater than that. Uh, so that's enough out of, uh, out, out of me on this one. There's one other one coming up that I haven't seen and I have high hopes for that one. So, uh, we, we shall see, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't want to spill the, the tea and let you know what movie that is, but it's coming over the next few days. But in between now and then there are some movies that I absolutely love. Some of them are, are utter nonsense. Some of them are legitimately great. We'll talk about all of that. Uh, so thank you, as always, for joining me on this journey through the uh, 31 days of Halloween. Um, I would entreat you, if you were listening on to the Legion podcast feed, uh, podcast feed, that you jump over to the Dark Parade, where you can get more out of me on a weekly basis once we uh, once we wrap up the 31 days of Halloween. Um, also, uh, if you were listening on the Dark Parade feed, be sure you're subscribed to the Legion podcast feed, where you can hear... Uh, a bunch of stuff like Cinema Psyops and uh, the Psycho Semanticast and uh, uh, the podcast on Haunted Hill and uh, Hello, This is the Doom Show and The Butcher Shop and Hail Ming is back and doing business. So all of that stuff is there waiting for you uh, on the Legion podcast feed where you can get uh, a lot of different voices talking about horror and, and horror movies and conventions and all kinds of stuff. And um so uh, please do that. Subscribe, download, all that fun stuff. Uh, you know, smash that subscribe button, I, I presume. Uh, also, if speaking of, uh, there is a, a Legion Podcast YouTube channel. So uh, drop by and, uh, and subscribe there as well, where you can get video versions of this. And uh, Hell Mean does like actual video podcasts. Uh, and we do that sometimes on the dark parade and we'll, we'll get back to that as soon as, uh, as is feasible. Um, okay. So that is it. Go out, have yourself a, a wonderful Sunday. Uh, we've got one more weekend before Halloween. So enjoy the coming week, get yourself uh, prepared, steal your loins for the, the week of movies to come. And, uh, I'll see you tomorrow with yet another episode of 31 days of Halloween. See you then.